going to show you how I color gold. This was a video that was requested of me. So we will be coloring this page as well as on this page here. So let's get started. So today I'm going to be coloring with Prismacolor. I've got out dark brown, sand, artichoke, and jasmine. Now these are not as yellow as you might want to reach for initially. Um, but I found that especially having something green, like green ochre or artichoke as your midtone, really makes the gold look a bit more realistic instead of bright and artificial. So that's kind of, I like the slightly more realistic look, even though I do like my colors to be um, vibrant and alive. So that's what I'm going with today. But what you'll want to follow along is a really dark brown of some kind, a middle brownish green, and then a light color. So if you go super bright yellow, you're gonna get a really bright gold. I, I tend to go for more like a yellow ochre, or in this case, I've got sand and jasmine that I'll be combining. You'll also want a white pencil for blending at the end. For a white pencil for blending, I really recommend picking up a Prismacolor. It's just gonna be really smooshy and blend those colors really well. If you don't have a Prismacolor, that's okay. Just use what you have. We'll also be using uh, I'll probably be using Posca, maybe gel pen, but you'll want either a gel pen or Posca for highlights. Now, the reason that I find gold tricky for me is because I tend to be an over blender where I, I tend to smoosh all my colors together as much as I can. And with something like a shiny metal, that's actually not what you want to do. A shiny metal has lots of high contrast. So let me see if I can find uh, an example. Oh, here. I've got this straw here. And you can see in this straw, we can see almost black, we can see white in the highlights, and we can see like a silver color. And those aren't blending together, it's just bands of color. So when you're coloring a metal or something really shiny, you're going to be creating bands of color instead of blending those colors together. When I start coloring a shiny object like this, I usually start with my midtone. So in this case, I'm going in with artichoke. I think I'll start, let's just do this little one up here. Oh, one more thing. Before we start, I just wanna talk about what kind of shape these little swirly things are. So you'll see in the middle, there's kind of this line, dot, 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 line, dot, dot, dot thing uh, that we have going on. This book, by the way, is Lost Ocean by Johanna Basford. And so this shape that these are is kind of a, a pointed shape like this, right? It's sticking up at me like this. I don't, I hope this makes sense. <laughs> but basically what I'm going for is the lighting that comes from top down. And in the case of lighting that comes from top down, which is actually what I have in real life right now, this side of that peak is light and this side of that peak is dark. So when I go in and color this, this line in the middle is that peak and I'm just gonna put in my midtones underneath that peak because that's the side that's gonna be dark. And I'm gonna get lighter and lighter as I go up because this is becoming the right half of that peak. So now up here, I have to go underneath up here. And I'm just doing this all with the midtone and this is just kind of how I map out my shadows so that I can visualize what I need to do. So here kind of in the middle, you, you'll get an overlap. And then the underneath and underneath here. Okay. And then I'm going to go around and do this on several of these. So here, the underneath, really quickly, that's actually going to start fading away. And we'll get the underneath over here. And then that's becoming the top, so we just kind of let it fade out. Underneath these dots. This one I'm actually gonna bring up a little higher just because it's next to this one. And so this one, it's okay that it's casting a shadow on here. So just let it kind of boop. Get underneath here and then we got to come back underneath this way again and let's do this big guy here so 
So like I said, this is just how I start. I start with the mid-tone and just kind of put in where my darkest places are going to be. And I do this lightly so that it's easy to erase and adjust if I need to. Let's go ahead and do this over here as well. Now these are more tricky because these are vertical. I generally tend to have my light, oh, you can't even see what I'm doing, sorry. I tend to have my light come in this direction. So in this case, I'm gonna put the shadows over here. And then on the side. And actually that means that I need to bring these up a bit and have that overlap a little bit more. I don't need to erase anything right now, even though, yeah, that's not really a mistake. That works. I just kind of have it go from this side, across the crease to underneath here. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing here. Now what I'm going to do is bring in one of my lighter colors. Do I want to do Jasmine or Sand first? Let's just test these out. Let me see what they look like. Okay, that is the sand. That is the Jasmine, which is much more yellow. So I think I'm going to do the Jasmine because I do kind of want a yellowish gold. And I'm just going to come up from there. Now, this is the part where we talk about bands and banding. So I am just kind of fading this up a little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and put in some bands. And the way that I do that is just create some kind of almost diagonal lines. in these top spaces. Okay, now I'm gonna take my mid-tone again and do the same thing on the bottom, this time a little darker than I was using it before. Okay, and then I'm also going to take that mid-tone and in the middle of the sand that I did, I'm just going to really lightly put a stripe as well. All right, now I'm taking my darkest, which in this case is dark brown. I'm just gonna throw in a shadow here. I'm gonna go all along this peak. And just make that dark. Till about, no, it's gonna be dark the whole way. Okay, so I've got a shadow there, and then I'm going to create bands, kind of where I put the mid-tone down a bit darker. And I'm only doing this on the bottom side of the peak.
And what you want to do is almost create this stripey effect. Okay, now I'm going to take my sand again. And what I want to do now is create stripes of white. And I'm just going to do that by extending my, my sand lines. And I'm just going to throw some under here that I forgot. And then a little bit, that was the artichoke. And then I'll throw in a little bit of the dark brown. And then I want to create a highlight right at the top. So I'm just going to come in with the sand here and the sand there preserve the white right there at that top. Okay. Some darker under the cheek. Dark brown. So this is essentially the type of thing that I do. I'll Start, let's start the next one. This one comes down around this way. I'm going to do this one here. Underneath of the peak. Underneath of the peak. Underneath of the peak. And in cases like this where it swirls around like I did up here, you'll see that I just kind of let it go from one side to the other. Let's go ahead and go in with the dark. I'm recording with my phone and I have headphones attached today to try to make the audio a little bit better. Um, but I keep hitting the cable because they're not Bluetooth headphones. So I apologize if the camera's moving around a lot. Really lightly with the artichoke here. Go a little bit more with the artichoke over here where it's kind of surrounded by things that might be casting shadows on it. Very lightly there. Just a
that edge. Okay, now for this little guy here, these are fun to color. This one's a little small. Zoom in a bit. And what I do on things like this is create one stripe or two stripes, depending how big it is. One stripe will be bigger than the other. So I have a stripe here. And a stripe, really thin stripe there. And fade that out as a little shadow just a little shadow coming off there onto the handle and then where this fat stripe is I'm gonna go ahead and have that fat stripe continue on the lid but it's gonna form this kind of triangle shape because the line of that stripe is gonna follow the shape of the lid and so this thin little line I'm also gonna extend that way following the shape of the lid now I'll take my dark color and go ahead and go in the middle of that line. Can't really fit it here on this little stripe. But I will go ahead and put some dark shadow there. And here and here on the little top there. And we almost don't even need this sand color except that we want it to look a little more yellow. So I still want to preserve those white stripes that are left there. That's all I would do for that one until we start with Posca. I might, though, create a little shadow underneath of it on this guy. Something like that. Oh, is it much darker right underneath? So it really looks like it's sitting on top there. Okay, I'm going to zoom out again a little bit. And I'm going to just keep going with this all the way around. I've actually, it looks like I've abandoned my sand. Oh, jasmine. I've been saying sand and I meant jasmine this whole time. I apologize. I've actually abandoned the sand color. I'm just using jasmine now. Jasmine, dark brown, and artichoke. Darkest color this time first, just for fun. Going in with the darkest color first allows you to get the darkness payoff from the pencil. By putting this mid-tone down first that I tend to do, I'm actually limiting myself in getting the darkest color I can out of my darker pencil. But I know myself in my coloring and I tend to overdo it a little bit. If I were to just go in with the dark pencil first and put in my dark spots, I, I would overdo it. So I tend to go in with my mid-tone first because that helps me kind of rein myself in. If I overdo it, at least then it's just the mid-tone and it's not too dark all over the place. So that's just me personally. If you prefer to go in with a darker color first, go for it. And at this point, if I want to get out a darker color, I might do that. I might get my espresso. So I've got espresso color out now. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into the places that are just going to need to be the darkest. So places like here, which is going to be in a lot of shadow. here and right alongside and here 
kind of these corners where things come together are going to be the darkest places. Because they're just sitting on top of one another, casting all these shadows. So we'll go here. Over here. Just going to add a little more um, jasmine. This is the dark brown again, not the espresso. So not the darkest one I was just using, but I'm going to use the dark brown I was using before just to create a little more shadow right here. This is what was down here. There we go. So this is kind of the general idea and for highlights, I'm going to use a Posca pen, but you can use a Jelly Roll or a Uniball or whatever white gel pen you have. This Posca pen is the smallest nib and it's covered in paint. It's the smallest nib. It's not the felt tip. It's the metal nib. So it's a 0.7. And this is the one that I use the most, but I don't see other artists using it so much in their coloring books, which kind of surprises me because I really like how tiny it is. Um, I'm going to come down on the peak, kind of the just the right side of the peak so I can still see the lines and the dots and create kind of a stripe that just goes all the way. That's the first thing I'm going to do. Now in cases like this where it goes into this dark shadow, I'm not going to take it all the way. Just maybe there and dab it a little bit to blend. And then this is so tiny, I'm just going to do dots instead of a line because I can get it smaller that way. Now, what else I would do if I had a background colored, so these kind of wavy shapes back here, boom, 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 I would probably fill them in with blue, but I'm not going to do it right now. But what I would do after I've colored them, because a Posca is generally my last layer, I normally wouldn't be even doing the Posca right now, I would wait till my whole picture is finished and then I would be adding the highlights. But I want to show you, I wanted to show you how I would go about doing this in the middle. You could even, if you wanted, you could create more of a highlight in places like this. If you wanted to exaggerate those highlights a bit more. Oh, I had said we would do the white. So something you can do with the white if you want is blend it out. I actually like the way this is looking without the white pencil though. Um, so I'm not going to, but you can take the white and blend in the places where the white of the paper is. If you feel like you're, if you feel like it's just a little too stripy, this is kind of something you can do to help mitigate that. I don't feel like I need to do it right now, so I'm not going to. But I do kind of like how this is going with exaggerating those highlights. So I'm gonna do a little bit of that.
And I'm just doing some lines, kind of hatching. Okay, and then if I were to color the background of this and have some colors going on this hall, if this whole thing was filled in with color, I would take my Posca or gel pen and I'll do it on this one since there's some color there, but I would go on the right and top side of all of these filigree swirls like this and trace, this time I'm going over the black line. So I would trace the black line all the way down. I would trace that all the way here. So I can do it here because that's colored there. Just show you what it would look like. I'll have to redo it when I finish this page and get the background colored in. But basically this is what it would look like. I'd only take it to about there. Because I want to stay on the top and on the right side. So you get kind of the idea. Now I advise not doing Posca or Jelly Roll until the end when your picture is mostly finished because if you do this like I'm doing right now and then go in to color the background, you're going to color over your Posca. Um, you can color over Posca, it we probably won't take it off, it'll just color it. But if you use a gel pen and color over that, you might end up scraping the gel pen off. So either way, you're kind of undoing the effect you're going for. So that's why I do the Posca at the end. I'm only gonna do that little bit so that when I do color this picture, I'm not taking off all this Posca. Uh, I will show you this little lamp though here. Let me zoom in one more time. We've got this little lamp. Ooh, my camera might be too close. Okay, and I'm just gonna... Mm. So again, the light's coming this direction. So I'm gonna create a highlight going this direction across the top of the lid. Get the Posca pen going, there we go. Do some little dots for fun since that's what Johanna's put in. I can do a white stripe here since I've got a highlight. I can do a highlight there. This is so tiny. And that's probably all I would do. You would be able to see that edge if this background was colored. Right now it just looks like it's kind of fading into the background because the background's white and I used a white Posca. But if the background were blue and I used a white Posca, that would actually look like a highlight. Coming over here to kind of this introduction page, we have a bunch of these. Let me kind of adjust my camera. We have a bunch of these different objects. So on this page, we've got things we can color gold. We've got goblets, we've got gold bars, we've got this vase we could do gold, and these lamps, and these crowns, and coins. So there's tons of stuff right here we can do gold. Okay, so to start, let's do the crown. In this case with the crown, I'm actually going to take my lightest color, the jasmine. By the way, these are not the colors necessarily that I use every time I color gold. There's always a light, there's always a dark, and there's always a greenish brown but it might change depending on the lighting in the image. If it's nighttime, if it's daytime, if there's a general blue cast or a general red cast or just what's going on in the image. But this is kind of a good neutral place to start. Okay, so I'm taking my jasmine. I keep wanting to call it sand. And I'm just gonna create some vertical bands that, are, that vary in sizes across this crown. And I do this by sort of hatching horizontally because I'm following the shape of the crown when I put these stripes in. If it's a really big shape, doing the stripes that way is gonna be hard because you're gonna not take it straight. It's, or at least for me. <laughs> I can't write straight for the life of me without lines. I, if there's a big shape and I'm trying to do some kind of thing like this, it's always gonna go ski wonky instead of straight down, so. This camera's driving me nuts, I apologize. Okay, and then we'll do another band here. This headphone thing I don't think is working just because it keeps tugging on my camera. I'll 
to find another solution. I was hoping to do it on the cheap, but I might just have to get a microphone. Hey, and let's do the artichoke, the mid-tone there. And I just go in the middle of those bands I created. These bands are just random. Make sure you're varying the sizes. I might, um, I might want to make these w the white stripes that are left. I might want to make them smaller. So I'm just gonna bring in the jasmine a little bit more. Okay, and now I'll go in with the dark brown. And just kind of go in the middle of the midtone I did. And again, this isn't as dark as this pencil can get because A, I'm not pushing very hard, but B, I'm also going on top of other wax that's already on the paper. So it's just not going to, even if I were to push to the point of burnishing, it's just not going to get as dark as it can. But that's okay. Don't really need it to get as dark as it can. Since I extended the jasmine there, I'm going to extend this artichoke color a little bit too. This is why I'm such a slow colorist. It's because I just kind of am too finicky. Okay, and then what you can do is you can take your mid-tone or your shadow. I kind of do the, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a shadow under these jewels. And what I tend to do is in places where these jewels are in the light, I use the mid-tone as the shadow. And in places where the jewels are in the dark, I use my dark um, shadow tone as that shadow. So here I'm gonna use my artichoke and just make a little shadow. But on this guy, the artichoke's not gonna make enough of a shadow. So I'll take the dark brown. Maybe even the espresso we were using before. Here we go. And we'll create something there too. Now for these little balls here, I'm just gonna take my dark one and go on the bottom and the left. Then I'm going to take my light color and put that in. And I'm not going to worry about leaving a highlight because I would do a highlight with Posca on these. And I'm just taking the Posca and doing a little highlight. Okay, the gold coins are kind of the same. A band.
to the lamp. This is kind of a bigger version of the one we did on the other page already. Is it the mid-tone? Add the shadow inside the mid-tone. And then the jasmine, the light color. Let's do, let's not do the base. The base, I'll make a different color later, but we can do this ring over here. So mid tone in two places. Shadow. The gold bars are going to be the same as the coins, basically. I just kind of pick random spots to put these bands in. And there we go. Can use Posca on these. So there you have it. I hope these are helpful tips for coloring gold. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more content like this in the future.